The world of the 21st century is overflowing with wealth. But there are scenes that contradict this abundance. Among the seven billion people on Earth, one out of five people survive on less than one dollar a day. One out of four people do not have access to drinkable water. One out of eight people suffer from malnutrition. There are many people who live in absolute and inescapable poverty around the world. It was a country in abject poverty, with its land ravaged by war, and did not have even the most meager resources. This country has no future. This country will not be restored even after a hundred years. How can a rose blossom from a garbage dump? <laughs> However, 60 years later, Korea has become a global power with the world's 12th largest economy. Korea has gone through an amazingly rapid and successful technological transformation. And this is fabulous. How did Korea, once the poorest country in the world, manage to escape the clutches of poverty and achieve such astounding success? In 1945, Korea gained independence from 36 years of Japan's occupational rule. But the Korean War broke out, even before they could enjoy the fruits of their newfound freedom. Countless North and South Korean soldiers lost their lives along with another 36,000 troops from 21 foreign nations. Taking a toll of some 5 million casualties, the Korean War left the newly formed republic in a state of devastation. Korea was very poor, all destroyed. We had to fight for the liberty and democracy of the Republic of Korea. However, during the busy efforts of restoration, it was nothing but education which became the nation's highest priority. Although they were struggling from day to day, Korean parents did not ignore the education of their children. Grateful for the sacrifice of their parents, children would walk for miles in order to attend school. Despite the war's devastation, the government continued to invest in education. This dedication to and investment in education produced a highly trained workforce that would later on become the impetus for Korea's economic turnaround. Unable to recover from the ruins of war on its own, Korea was forced to rely on foreign aid. But when the foreign aid subsided after completion of the major restoration work, this caused Korea's economic growth to stall. This was a dire situation for a nation whose budget relied more than 90% on foreign aid. It was at this time that the military regime came to power. Having succeeded in a military intervention, its leadership made economic development their top priority, if only to quell widespread public turmoil. 
In order to spur economic growth, the military regime founded the Economic Planning Board, giving it unprecedented powers for planning, allocating the budget, and for attracting foreign capital. The Economic Planning Board developed a five-year plan, which was to be the new blueprint for economic development. In 1962, the first five-year plan was put into action. The problem was the acquisition of funds. Unfortunately, the United States reacted with indifference. Berger, the United States ambassador to Korea at the time, also made a negative report on this plan to Washington, D.C. But Korea did not give up. After endless efforts, they were able to receive an inflow of capital from West Germany. The miners and nurses that were dispatched to West Germany sent their earnings home, and the government was able to obtain loans by pledging these funds as collateral. This was helpful, but far from enough. Due to an inability to attract sufficient funds, the Korean economy took a nosedive. Fortunately, the light industry sectors like textiles, wigs, and needlework developed rapidly and created momentum for the Korean economy's growth. While guiding the economy with policies such as rationalization of the exchange rate and interest rates in 1964 and 1965, the government also responded to the market's demands and fostered free enterprise. However, since the light industries relied on low-cost wages, their competitiveness weakened. The government began to invest in new industries, such as steel, coal, chemicals, machinery, and shipbuilding, to create a powerful engine for economic growth. I think it is dynamic, as well as uh, the foresight towards future and their interpretation of globalization into business opportunities. Steel was the first heavy industry to be developed. Despite skepticism and concern about the feasibility of such a venture, the government launched a massive effort to build an integrated steel mill in 1970. The United States and the world looked upon this project with doubts as the steel industry requires massive investment and cutting-edge technology. And a more advanced nation than Korea at that time had attempted this task, but failed. In spite of such skepticism, the Pohang steel mill began to produce steel in 1973. Sanopara here, Denica. Kuka, a Kangi Pujara, Sanopa, a Kujara Kajal, Hesenica. Sejo would be Jungsi with Heso, Kagi Mandrajoti. Kreso. Although it entered the steel industry about 60 years later than advanced nations, Korea would soon become the world's fourth largest producer of steel. The success of this primary industry paved the way for the advancement of other steel-related industries, such as shipbuilding, automobiles, fine machinery, construction, and electronics.
The new community movement is considered as one of the crucial forces in promoting the growth of the Korean industry. When the new community movement began in the 1970s, the Korean government was virtually bankrupt. But the support that they did manage to provide was used effectively by Koreans in improving their living standards. 33,267 villages in Korea received free cement. For the next two years, only villages that showed promise were given additional cement and steel. The government decided to support the communities that had the will to stand on their own. The people also cast off their self-doubt and gained confidence that anything was possible, which nurtured hope for a bright future. Once a movement to increase the revenue of farms, the new community movement made its way into all sectors of society, increasing social awareness in the cities, factories, and the workplaces. This showed that poverty could not be overcome through foreign aid alone, and that the true path to success lies in deeply rooted solutions that can change the core of society. This grassroots effort, coupled with a global economic boom, helped to fuel an amazing economic growth in Korea. But a crisis emerged from an unexpected source. In October 1973, the Yom Kippur War broke out. With the price of raw materials skyrocketing, the domestic factories ground to a halt while inflation soared. This was a critical blow to Korea. Since it was a country without a drop of oil, which had just begun to industrialize. But this crisis proved to be an opportunity. The Korean government used the construction boom in the Middle East, which resulted from the skyrocketing oil prices, dispatching workers to the region and constructing $10 billion worth of buildings a year and used the oil crisis to stimulate economic growth. Around this time, another oil shock occurred. After learning valuable lessons from the first crisis, Korea overcame the second oil shock without much difficulty. During the two oil shocks, most other countries decreased their investment. But not Korea. For the first oil shock, Korea invested heavily in its steel, oil, chemicals, machinery, and shipbuilding industries. While in response to the second oil shock, Korea boldly restructured its economy. Their strategy was right on target. The phenomena of the three lows, the US dollar, oil prices, and interest rates, helped the Korean economy to flourish in the 1980s. Meanwhile, with the struggle for democracy in June 1987, each class of society started to voice their demands. This sparked the efforts to realize democratization, which was lagging behind the nation's economic development. Korea's export-based economy became even more competitive and the nation's per capita GNP rose sharply. These achievements came after only 33 years of Korea's economic development efforts. Thanks to this success, Korea became a member of the WTO and a member of the OECD in 1996. But these successes had blinded the nation to the lurking dangers of the global economy. Quite simply, it could be said that Korea had popped the champagne cork too soon. The Asian financial crisis, which started in Thailand, spread through East Asia like a wildfire. 
six out of 10 major corporations were in danger of bankruptcy. Even the Chebols of Korea were on the verge of collapse. On November 21st, 1997, Korea applied for relief assistance from the IMF. To the globalized environment and return the Korean Corporate downsizing became the order of the day, while the people of Korea, who once dreamed of joining the world's advanced countries, were burdened to share the pain. Then again, the financial crisis presented an opportunity for economic reforms. Insolvent financial institutions were shut down or merged, while corporate businesses underwent extensive restructuring. Along with this restructuring, Management systems were also changed to include principles based on competition and performance. First of all, Korea recognized that it had to restructure some of its policies and some of its industries, and it did that aggressively and forcefully. It provided leadership in that. It did not wait for the rest of the world to make it happen. As a result, Korea's foreign exchange reserves, which had dwindled to a mere $3.9 billion at the time of the financial crisis, surged to $99 billion in September 2001. Repayment to the IMF, which began in 1998, was completed in August 2001, with a final installment of $350 million. It was a truly moving achievement in which Korea managed to pay off the loan three years ahead of the deadline. During the time Korea had escaped from dire poverty and become a world power with global corporations, the country had to reinvent itself a number of times, while the people had to make countless sacrifices. When war in the Middle East broke out, most corporations and their employees withdrew from the region in panic. But Korean corporations faced the potential risks and remained in the region maintaining their marketing networks. Due to the financial crisis in 1997, the value of currency plummeted and the price of gold skyrocketed. But the people of Korea impressed the world by voluntarily contributing to a national gold campaign. A similar response was seen when the swine influenza broke out in Mexico. While the world shook in fear of the disease, the employees of Korean businesses in Mexico continued their work with face masks, which enabled them to boost their regional presence. The automobile industry is a powerful engine for economic growth in Korea. The Korean automobile industry experienced countless ups and downs, taking bitter lessons from its various difficulties. But a Korean compact auto, made with the sweat of a dedicated workforce, received favorable reviews in the United States in the 1980s, which served to open a new era in the Korean automotive industry that would enjoy explosive growth in the coming years. The semiconductor industry was another risky venture. It was considered a pipe dream by many because of Korea's late entry into the industry. But thanks to the aggressive support of the Korean government, Korea emerged as the world's third-ranked semiconductor producer and succeeded in developing the state-of-the-art 64K DRAM, which led to its global leadership in the industry. In only 10 years, 
Korea managed to secure a dominant share of the global market and is currently the world leader of the semiconductor industry. Korea also attempted a revolution in the information technology industry. The cutting-edge enterprises that were founded during the IT boom provided a new stimulus to the economy, enabling Korea to become an IT power in a matter of years. Korea was one of the early countries to use the internet and has a strong uh, history of innovation in technology. Uh, the foresightedness of the government gave it a number one position in broadband wired. The newfound confidence stemming from its prosperous economy has served as a stepping stone for a cultural revolution as well. Korea began to produce Korean style music, TV dramas and films imbued with Korean sensibilities. This started the international trend known as the Korean wave. Until this day, the Korean economy has invested ardently in education, did not dread failure and took on any challenge, gained confidence in success, continued to adopt innovation, and has enjoyed successful development thanks to the sacrifice of its people. But this spectacular success story, characterized by growth-oriented economic policies, has also spawned problem areas, such as a growing disparity between the rich and poor, conflict between cities and rural areas, and pollution. Therefore, Korea's efforts to solve these domestic social issues and to adapt to the changing global economy remain an ongoing effort. As a country that was once one of the poorest nations in the world, Korea has built an economic success story from the ruins of war. Korean parents continued to send their children to school even as they starved. And the Korean government invested boldly in industries such as steel, shipbuilding, automobiles, petrochemicals and semiconductors to achieve extraordinary economic growth successfully overcoming the financial crisis that swept through Asia, Korea has acquired a world-class manufacturing industry. In 2009, Korea joined the OECD's Development Assistance Committee. Korea has become the world's only nation among the various countries that gained independence after World War II to evolve from an aid recipient to an aid donor. The strategy and know-how of Korea's economic development from absolute poverty is now being benchmarked by many countries from all over the world. And in 2010, Korea will become the first nation in Asia to host the G20 summit meeting, which is being held in Seoul. Indeed, Korea is taking on new challenges for the world's future as a responsible member of the international community.